Hello AFK viewers and welcome to what I hope will be a semi-regular series uh, looking at how we've made some of our costumes and props as part of the series. Um, so AFK craft workshops if you like. Um, the first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, something I had to do in a big hurry when I was making Veruga's axe. Uh, I had to make it in one night and it was on set the next day. And it was a uh, stone axe so I was looking at how to make foam look like stone. So um, one of these things is not like the other. This is a real block of stone and these are made of uh, foam. Which started out like this. Just your basic camp mat which can be found in camping stores or uh, anywhere that sells um, this kind of flat rubber. So we're going to make this, which is very flat and dull and boring, look like this, which is all nice and textured and interestingly painted. So I'll move these out of the way. First thing we want to do is to get some texture on it because as you can see it's very flat. Um, so what I'm going to do there is take a stone base so this is a paving slab, but you can use a uh, concrete driveway, um, paving stones outside your house, anything that's got a bit of roughness to it. You don't want a smooth surface for reasons that you'll see in a second. And we're going to take our foam and a hammer, and we're going to hit it. What's that? Oh, what that's doing? is putting a texture on the surface of the foam. And the harder you hit it, the deeper the texture. Okay, so this paving stone's got kind of a uh, rough edge to it as well, so I'm going to put it on the edge and hit it on that edge for some slightly deeper dents. Okay, and you continue on that. Now what I like about this uh, this technique of uh, making foam look like stone is that there's no real wrong way to do this. It's a very organic process and it's a uh, process of building up your effect in layers. So what we've got here is just the first layer. So then I take a heat gun, like so, and just playing that gently over the surface. You'll see almost straight away that those dents that I've made start to soften and become kind of a mottled surface starting to look a little bit more like stone but that's only my first layer so then I go back and add more fine detail okay so we've got a surface now that's starting to look a little more like stone it's got some shallow detail on it from the softening from the air gun and it's got some finer detail as well which I've just added. I also want to look at how to add these uh, mystical runes that I've got on this piece and that's super easy. Some of you might already know this process but what you do is you take a scalpel, craft knife and you make some reasonably shallow cuts in the foam like so, and if I hit that with the heat gun you'll see what's going to happen center that up there look at that my mystical moon runes have magically appeared so that's softened out all the uh, finer detail there so once again I'll just give it the bash with a little bit of fine detail that's pretty much ready to paint okay now looking at real stone it's not all the same color some areas are darker some areas are lighter it's got streaks of brown and gray and this particular stone has got sparkly bits in it as well um, from minerals and um, compared to a unpainted foam here this looks very interesting this looks very flat so what we're going to do in the painting is add some interest and detail and get some uh, get some shade into the crevices and the cracks here to bring out the detail and once again this is the uh, process of building up by layers 
Uh, it's not just one layer that we're going to be putting on here. You can do one, two, three, four, as many as you want until you've got the result that you're happy with. Once again, there is no right or wrong way of doing this. So what I've got is a spray primer, just using Dulux Universal Auto Primer in grey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray that onto um, onto my foam. Now you'll see that I've got a little pile of dirt standing by here. Nice dry dirt, um, quite fine, because as soon as the spray is on, even before it dries, like pretty much straight away, I'm going to sprinkle some of this dirt onto it so it sticks with the paint and mixes in and adds some really nice natural looking colour there. So you'll see how that's going to work. So spraying on reasonably thick and then straight away, boom, hit it with the dirt, rub it in. Okay, like I said, stone is not all one color. It's many, many shades of grays and browns. Okay. So that's looking a little more interesting already. However, this is just our first layer, so I won't bother doing the back because that'll take too long. So maybe I'll hit it again with a spray and bang, rub some more dirt on. And now we're going to add what I call the wash. Uh, now the wash is a thin coat of uh, liquid which will get into the cracks and really bring out the detail, really make it pop. Um, now you can buy all sorts of different products for this, uh, some of them quite expensive, um, like model making um, paints from various companies which will, uh, as I say, get into the cracks and uh, make the details pop. But what I like to use for something like this is a little tester pot of wood stain. This was five dollars from the local hardware store. You know, there's quite a bit of it in there and it does the job really really well. So just with a very rough brush I'm going to paint that on. This brush has been left to dry actually so it's not the best but it doesn't really matter because it's just a rough job. And this is going to get into all the little nooks and crannies. And then before it's dry, take a cloth, or in my case, just a napkin, and dab it off. Okay, you can leave it thicker in some parts if you like. It's like I said, rock is not all the same color lighter in parts and darker in others. Best not to wipe though because wiping will leave streaks whereas dabbing gives it kind of a mottled, mottled look which is a little bit more natural. I'm just gonna very lightly spray it and just pat it in the dirt. You know, there is no wrong way of doing this. It's just whatever you think is looking the best. Okay, there you go. Starting to look a lot more varied in colour and texture compared to what it was in the back. A lot more interesting. So for the last step on a fake stone, I'm going to take some uh, acrylic paint I'm going to do some dry brushing. Now, for those of you familiar with the process, you'll know what this is, but uh, for those of you who are not, dry brushing is the best thing ever. So that's taking a wash, white, uh, not sorry, white paint, getting some on your brush, a nice clean brush, and brushing most of it off before you start. And then going to your thing that you're actually going to paint on, and just lightly brush over the top. The reason it's called dry brushing is because you're brushing with the least amount of paint possible while still 
getting some detail onto your surface. As you can see, hopefully on there, you're getting just a little bit of white on the highlights around the edges of the mystical runes, the corners of the rock, and the upper layers of the uh, of the dents. And once again, that's just bringing out the detail. Simulating scratches and bumps that the rock has taken over the course of its lifetime. Now I usually overdo this a little bit when I first start because I would probably go back and hit that with some more dirt, hit that with some more wash even, um, spray it again, add some more dirt and just keep going until I've got a variety of surfaces on there to really make it look nice and organic. But um, that's probably good enough to start with. A lot of the techniques that I've shown here would work on surfaces for simulated metal as well. If you're going for a, like a really rusty, beaten up um, looking suit of armor, this would work for that too. But yeah, hopefully that should give you some ideas uh, of uh, what to go on with for your next projects. Hope you enjoy the series and we'll see you for the next AFK Craft Workshop.